and they're off and racing. So jumping away just under two and a half miles for our opening race of the day. The Ascot race course supports sensory room maiden hurdle and they come towards the first flight. Vincenzo, very prominent together with Marvellous Mick. Those two are going to be in the air virtually together as they come to flight number one. Over it safely in behind them was Giza Rockstar and out wider on the track. That's Bally Finn who's in a fair early position. Zanderbad is tracking Vincenzo up the inside of the track and is alongside Old Time Chaser, who's another one who's pretty prominent. Just behind those is Bear Meadows. Bear Meadows followed then by the Winslow Boy. Strutter is further back, together with Easter Icon. To the outside is Rum Cove, who is followed by Jasper Boy and the back marker. Early on is Catch, Catch Fire. As they move round now towards the home straight, and flights number three and four. They tend to jump, all told, in our opening race of the afternoon. And the favourite, Vincenzo, is over on the far side of the group, disputing the lead with Marvellous Mick as they come in towards this next flight. All over it safely. In third place is Bally Finn, followed by Giza Rockstar in the white jacket. And then Zanderbad, the Irish Raider from Tony Martin's yard in fifth place with the noseband, jumped really well there to go just ahead of Old Time Chaser, who's in sixth place, and Bear Meadows racing in seventh. Strutter is in eighth, followed then by the Winslow Boy, who's held up together with Easter Icon. Just ahead of Easter Icon races Rum Cove, and then there's a break of a couple of lengths or so. Nudged along is Catch Catch Fire, and Jasper Boy is just struggling to go the gallop at the moment. Jasper Boy in last place, and detached by five or six lengths. So they've come past the enclosures, out on their final circuit then, and heading shortly to the downhill run towards the fifth flight of hurdles, which will take them to the halfway stage of the contest. So Vincenzo and Sam Tristan Davis leading right up the inside from Marvellous Mick in second place. Just in behind those is Zanderbad, who's stalking them early. Giza Rockstar not far away. On the wide outside still is Bally Finn. Under pressure at the back is Catch Catch Fire and so too Jasper Boy. The game looks up for both of them, really, in truth, as they move on down towards the next flight. And up front, still, Vincenzo, showing the way from Giza Rockstar and Marvellous Mick to the wide outside, still being dragged by Zanderbad. After Zanderbad is Bally Finn towards the outside of the party, taking the next flight of hurdles. Awkward jump from Marvellous Mick, just struggling to hold his position after that. Bear Meadows, after a long, long layoff, travels with some hope, and the two Nicky Henderson train runners are still there and together. Old Time Chaser alongside Strutter, both towards the inner. Marvellous Mix now on their outside. The Winslow boy hasn't yet made a move. Uh, Easter Icons at the back of this main group in company with Rum Cove. And then there's quite a gap back to Catch Catch Fire. Moving then through their point of departure and now uphill towards home and the final four flights of hurdles in the Ascot race course support sensory room maiden hurdle race. So Vincenzo right up the inside with Giza Rockstar up on the outer and then with those and close up still is Bally Finn. There was a small mistake from old time chaser behind these leaders. Still there is the Winslow boy up on the wide outside of the group, touching down in fourth or fifth place. Zanderbad, as quiet as you like, up the inside, still keeping his eye on both Vincenzo and Giza Rockstar, who are our two leaders as they move now towards the home straight. Marvellous Mick has dropped tamely away. He's well beaten now. As they move to the home straight, Vincenzo with Giza Rockstar. These two separated by just a half a length in third place. That's Zanderbad who's trying to go with them. And these three have opened up now over Strutter and then Ballyfin who can do no more. And the Winslow boys up on the wide outside from Old Time Chaser who's now well beaten. Second last flight of hurdles. Vincenzo, an untidy jump. Hands a chance to Giza Rockstar. And now switching is Zanderbad Bad, who's come stand side with his run and he's coming strongly Zanderbad as well final flight three separated by half a length Zanderbad landed running though in front from Giza Rockstar who is battling back in tenacious style Vincenzo's now beaten in third place what a great finish Giza Rockstar now back in front having been headed he's shrugging off the challenge of Zanderbad for a most brave opening race win Giza Rockstar and they're off and racing, sent on their way for race two. It's the first steeplechase of the day as well. The Ascot race course supports Achieving for Children handicap chase. 
and Carton is right there in the early stages, one of four or five who are happy to get on with things. Godot made a mistake further down the field, and Hurler on the ditch, who's a horse who has front run before, is nowhere near the pace early. He's right at the back end of the field as Carton takes them now around the bend for the first time and on towards the second of their 17 fences. So Carton leading with Storming Home in second place, Sageburg County around the outside and Invincible Nao the Grey. Nicely positioned early and behind the leaders as they take the first of four fences down this section of the track. Up the inside, Dream in the Park, touchdown next. Wide on the track is Rock in a Storm next to Man Insane as they take fence number three. Uh, then Godot further back and Jack's touch was a bit deliberate at the back end of the field there. Hurler on the ditch remains towards the rear end of the field as well as they take the next and Invincible Nao, the one we lost there. Uh, unshipped David Noonan. David had no chance of staying in the saddle though. The horse didn't fall, just made a bad mistake and unshipped David Noonan. So Invincible Nao out of the race and now Jack's touches last of all as they move round into the home straight for the first time. Up front then, Carton leading, storming home in second position. And these two have established a clear lead now over the rest of the field with King's Threshold making ground now into third place and Sageburg County in fourth. Rock in a Storm is sharing fifth with Dream in the Park towards the inside and Man Insane next as they take the first of the pair of fences in the home straight. Hurler on the ditch still off the pace with Godot. And if you back Jack's, Jack's touch here, things are looking grim because he's at the back of the field and not only that, he is not travelling very well. The great loose horse leads them over the next fence and over that with a clear advantage now is Carton. Carton, the best turned out, Theo Gillard, four or five lengths clear of Storming Home in second place, King's Threshold in Sageburg County. They go four and five, followed by Dream in the Park up the inside with Rock in a Storm and Godot, Man Insane and Hurler on the ditch and still last is Jack's Touch. They race away now around the bend, heading away from the grandstands, and the next fence they take is number eight, and Carton, still clear, coming down towards the next fence. Carton, up and over safely, landed some five lengths in advance of the chasers, with Stormy Home in second place still, and King's Threshold up the inside third. Sageburg County is in fourth place as they take the next of their fences. Sageburg County followed by both Rock in a Storm and Dream in the Park and Hurler on the ditch with Godot further back and Man Insane on the outside and still a gap to Jack's Touch who is still labouring in last place. Carton is still our clear leader although hit that fence quite hard. Still touched down with a seven length advantage with only the loose horse for company at the moment as Carton now leads them down towards the next. Seven or eight lengths clear from Storming Home in second. Sageburg County will take this next fence in third place, followed by King's Threshold, who is tracked by Godot. And then after those is Dream in the Park as they move on with Hurler on the ditch still at the back end of the field. Rock in a Storm on the outside of them as well as Jack's Touch at the back end of the field still struggles on as they now move on. In fact, it's too much of a struggle for Jack's Touch, I think, and he's stopping very quickly and will be pulled up. So Jack's Touch effectively out of the race as they now move on towards the next fence. This is the sixth from the finish. And over still, travelling powerfully, the leader, Carton, who has been in front throughout the contest. Storming home is out jumped for second place by Sageburg County on the outside. Man Insane is creeping closer now as well towards the wide outer. Behind those, Dream in the Park is still going okay. And King's Threshold as well with a chance. Godot's getting himself into it as well. And at the back of the main group now is Hurler on the ditch. And they're clear now from Rock in a Storm, taking the next fence. And there, the leader was still Carton, but only just as they turn for home. On the outside is Storming Home. Then Sageburg County King's Threshold, Dream in the Park, Godot. They'll fancy their chances turning in. Man Insane is next, and then Hurler on the ditch. 
who's just about still in touch, about seven lengths off them. They come now down towards the second last fence. Storming home comes through to take the lead. Storming home at the second last, jumped it well. From in second, Cartone. On the outside, Sageburg County King's Threshold next, followed by Dream in the Park. And now they race on down towards the final fence. Storming home, out in front here. Keelan Woods needs a good jump, got it. Sageburg County and King's Threshold are coming at him either side. King's Threshold, the finisher on the far rail. King's Threshold coming strongly at Storming home. King's Threshold getting up. King's Threshold got up in the last few strides to just tip Storming Home out of it. And they were clear of Sageburg County, who was close for third in company with Dream in the Park and Hurler on the ditch to the outside. And they're off and racing. So away for the events at Ascot Juvenile Handicap Hurdle Race. And Spiced Rum, this filly in terrific form, comes straight away with the advantage down towards flight number one with Royal Way for company. Royal Way also the winner of his last two starts. Further back, Gifted Angel shifted left and just gave a bump to Palio. They were alongside each other. And Kurush is in that line of three now in behind the chasers as they come over the next of their flights. And not a great jump either from Gifted Angel again there. At the back end of the field, Yellow Star already just being driven along. Uh, Hamsayan is buried away, getting plenty of cover early. He's alongside Vitani and Cato de Joie. Back marker being Yellow Star, he's come back on the bridle now, having been briefly bustled along. But it's Spiced Rum, David Noonan, taking the clear advantage now from Royal Way, who settles behind in second place. In third is Kurosh. Kurosh followed by Palio to the inside. And then Hamsayan improving on the outer. Cado de Joie next, followed by Gifted Angel, whose jumping will need to improve. Vitani's up on Gifted Angel's wide outside. Yellow Star with the red cap is still the back marker. Spiced Rum coming down towards flight number three. Spiced Rum up and over safely. Vitani and, and Gifted Angel have now dropped to the rear of the field. And once again, Yellow Star just nudged along away from that flight. Spiced Rum then down towards flight four. From Royal Way in second place, Palio up the inside is next to Kurosh. And just behind those is Hamsayan, patiently ridden alongside Cado de Joie, taking the next flight of hurdles. Cado de Joie followed over by Yellow Star, who once again comes under pressure. Vitani and Gifted Angel at the back of the field now. Field covered by seven lengths as Spiced Rum enthusiastically goes about her work once again. She's got a three-length lead now as they head down to the bottom turn. They've got four flights of hurdles left to take. Royal Way is in second place. Palio's in third. Then Kurosh on the wide outside. Cado de Joie fifth, followed by Ham Sayan, who's to the outside in sixth place. Vitani is next, up the inner yellow star, and on the outside of those, gifted Angel. So now they move on towards the fourth from the finish. Spiced Rum. Still out in front, approaching the next flight. Just shifted left slightly over that, Spiced Rum. Uh, over safely, though, and pursued still by Royal Way. On their outside, that's Kurosh. Palio still jumping with a chance there in the blue colours. Close fourth in fifth is Ham Sayan, and then a small break to Cato de Joie. It looks as though the other three, Vitani, Yellow Star, and Gifted Angel, are all under heavy pressure as they move now round to the home straight. They've got two to jump in this event at Ascot Juvenile Handicap Hurdle Race. And up front, Spice Rum has made all of the running, still pursued by Royal Way. Palio's in behind those on the inside, followed by Kurosh on the outer. Uh, Ham Sayan's going to try and deliver on the stand side in fifth place. Not been asked the massive question just yet. Second last flight of hurdles. Palio came through there to dispute it with Royal Way. Spice Rum is now under pressure. So too Kurosh. And what's Hamsayan going to find? Still more needed in third place as they jump the last. Palio, untidy jump, but landed just in front. Royal Way trying to fight back. Hamsayan's riding behind them. Hasn't given up just yet either. These two leaders come close together. Royal Way and Palio. Hamsayan ran out of room. Spice Rum is running on again. Royal Way is tough as you like here. Royal Way goes on for Niall Houlihan to beat Palio tight for third. The rallying Spice Rum and the somewhat unlucky lucky looking Ham Sayan next great race and they're off and racing jumping away then with just over two miles to go for the LK Bennett handicap chase 13 to jump Marta Tor and Fred Arm the first two to show 
as they pop over fence number one. Over it in third place is the last high king. Fourth, and a bit keen, is Coast Guard Station. And walking clover well and truly held up the mare at the back end of the field. So it was rather after you clawed at the start, and as a result, they're racing at quite wide intervals and in one straight line down towards fence number two. And the leader, Marta Tor, leading up under Charlie Deutsch. Here's the second then, Marta Tor from Fred Arm, who had an outing at the Cheltenham Festival a couple of weeks ago. The last high king is in third place. Coast Guard Station is pulling very hard indeed, and now restrained in last place as Walking Clover goes fourth. Marta Tor at the next. Lovely jump from Marta Tor. Marta Tor allowed to dictate terms here, and seems to be quite happy with that arrangement as well. Marta Tor jumping neatly and bowling along with the lead. By three lengths to Fred Arm in second place. Then comes the last high king third. In fourth place, Walk in Clover and Coast Guard Station in fifth and last position. And still in one straight line, at two or three length intervals, they head towards fence number four. The line of four fences racing away from the grandstands. The third of which is a ditch. But two plain fences to come next. Marta Tor over safely from Fred Arm. In third place there is the last high king. Walk in Clover had to be just taken off his heels in fourth. Coast Guard Station still the back marker. Marta Tor still jumping nice and straight and true. Accurately as well. And now an open ditch they'll take. This is the first open ditch in the race. Fence number six. Marta Tor leading from Fred Arm. So Marta Tor into this ditch. At it, jumping really neatly. Really nice and accurate and straight all the way around so far. Marta Tor from Fred Arm. The last high king, walk in Clover and Coast Guard Station. As they come towards the seventh, this is the last on this section of the track. Marta Tor over safely. Fred Darm in second place. The last High King was just squeezed away from that fence with Walk-In Clover and Coast Guard Station. Coast Guard Station has been free throughout the first half of the race and jumping out to the left as well, which hasn't really helped him. He's still in last and a little bit of a distant last as well. As Marta Tor sweeps them around the bend and uphill now to the finish. Six more fences left to take in this LK Bennett handicap chase. Marta Tor, Fred Darm still in his wing mirrors, three lengths away. Slightly untidy jump from the last high king. Uh, walk in Clover, switch to the outside. And Coast Guard Station again a bit scruffy with his jumping. Taking the fifth from the finish there. Marta Tor led. Fred Arm and Walk in Clover. Second and third now, the skeleton pair. Behind them, the last high king in fourth place and still jumping left is Coast Guard Station. And that was the final ditch, four out. Now another plane fence and Marta Tor still swinging along. Marta Tor with Fred Arm landing within two lengths of him. Walking Clover's in third, but now just driven along. Likewise, the last high king and is Marta Tor just pressing a few buttons here. Coast Guard Station's trying to improve from the rear end of the field. But Marta Tor, the one to catch, very much so, coming down towards the second last. Marta Tor from Fred Arm, who's really driven. Coast Guard Station's into third now. Marta Tor was in a little bit tight to that fence there. And best for the first time, Charlie Deutsch has to go to work on him. Fred Arm has not been fully shaken off. And Coast Guard Station staying on would be the surprise of the race if he could get there. Marta Tor at the last. Lovely, fast, accurate jump. Marta Tor maintained a two and a half length lead over that one from Fred Arm. And Coast Guard Station still finish off the race pretty strongly. But a lovely all the way right from Charlie Deutsch there on Martador. And they're off and racing. So just under three miles, the race distance this time around. Quite a long run downhill towards the first of their 11 flights of hurdles at the back of the field. Vengeance is last and just ahead of him, Toto Wolf is a bit keen in the race. But up front, Nickel Force, Boldly showing out here. He's very enthusiastic as well. He's got Rebel Intentions on his outside and Redbridge Rambler to the inside. And they're the three leaders. And they're a dramatic departure from Percolator. And Percolator has brought down the bold Thady. So that was a real dramatic start to the race. Percolator just ducked out right to her left. And uh, I'm afraid the bold Thady had absolutely nowhere to go in behind. So a dramatic start to the race. They make their way now round towards the next section of the course. 
both riders there up okay, it would appear. Jamie Hamilton and Tomasina Aston on their feet. So now they come round towards flights two and three. You can see both horses are, are galloping away after that incident as well. So hopefully they've not come to any appreciable harm. So now they come on towards the next flight and up and over safely. Johnny B moving forward now. Johnny B with the advantage. With that one is Rebel Intentions and between them is Redbridge Rambler. Back in fourth place races Strachan. Touch of Thunder comes next. And then outside Odessa. Outside Odessa's uh, just in fact got Nickel Force marginally ahead. Nickel Force is followed then round this next turn by Much Too Dear. Face to Music is at the back end of the field with just two behind him early on. Vengeance being one of those and Toto Wolf is the other as they now move round towards the home straight for the first time. So Johnny B it is with the narrow advantage as they skip over the next flight of hurdles and down to what will be the last next time around. Johnny B with a narrow lead here from Rebel Intentions over this next flight. Rebel Intentions was followed by Redbridge Rambler in the red and white stripe. Strachan next. Touch of Thunder close up and so too is Nickel Force. Nickel Force just worse than halfway down the field next to outside Odessa. And there followed by Much Too Dear after much too dear face to music, Toto Wolf and the back marker is now Vengeance. Racing away then, another circuit of the track to go in this Ascot Shop Novices Handicap Hurdle Race. And up front, Johnny B, still together with Rebel Intentions. The two of them matching strides ahead of Redbridge Rambler in third place. Strachan comes next, then Touch of Thunder outside Odessa with... Uh, Nickel Force on that one's outside as they take the next flight of hurdles. Nickel Force was... Oh, we've lost one there at the back end of the field. And the one that came down there was the well-backed and well-fancied Face to Music. Face to Music out of the contest. Rider Gavin Sheehan's got to his feet. Vengeance and Toto Wolf are still to the back end of the field. Now they come towards the next flight. Johnny B... Still leading here. Johnny B over safely. That time, Touch of Thunder was slow over it and needs a bit of reminding. Away from that, ridden along. So it's Johnny B, but they're in behind. They've really grouped up tightly. Rebel Intentions is still second as they make the bottom turn. They've got four flights of hurdles left to jump. Third place for Redbridge Rambler. Then Strachan on the outside, Nickel Force with every chance. Followed then by Touch of Thunder who's under pressure, and that's a long way out to becoming under pressure. Outside Odessa, big price, but is going okay at the moment. Much too dear is with that one towards the outside. Vengeance and Toto Wolf are the back markers as they head now towards this fourth last flight of hurdles. The leader, Johnny B, with Redbridge Rambler to the outside now. A rebel intention still there. Strachan in behind them. Widest of all on the track is Nickel Force. Race into the third last flight of hurdles now. Jumping still right into contention is outside Odessa. He's outrunning his odds at the moment, he's shaping fine, and then pushed along is much too dear. Toto Wolf pushed along, Vengeance likewise, and Touch of Thunder has dropped away tamely to be last and looks beaten. So they head round the home turn then. Johnny B pressed sternly here by Redbridge Rambler and Sean Bowen, who seems to be going very strongly indeed. Nickel Force outside Odessa and then Rebel Intentions are followed by Strachan, who's not really picked up. Much too dear, has got plenty to do with Vengeance and Toto Wolf next. Here's the second last flight of hurdles. Jumping there to the lead was Redbridge Rambler, drifting down the stand side. That's Nickel Force. He's got to trip, try and pick up. Outside Odessa, still got a squeak. Far side of these is much too dear being produced. Rebel Intentions is next as Johnny B weakens, but the leader was Redbridge Rambler. Onto the running they come. Redbridge Rambler now being chased by Much Too Dear, who's not given up the chase. Redbridge Rambler, Much Too Dear getting a little bit closer. Will the line come in time for Redbridge Rambler? It does. 
Redbridge Rambler won by a half length from Much Too Dear in second place. Tight in behind them for third place between Nickel Force. And they're off and racing. We wish each and every one of these popular veterans well over the next six minutes or so. 20 fences to be jumped here in today's veteran handicap chase. And down towards the first, quite an alarming jump at the first from back on the lash. But he landed safely alongside Sam Brown. They dispute it with last year's winner, two for gold, toward the outside. Certainly Red is just in behind them, taking off in fourth place. Back on the lash again, looking quite awkward at fence number two. Mac Totti is in behind Risk and Roll. And then Larry out wider. And the early back marker is Diego de Chamil as they race on now quickly towards the open ditch. Fence number three. Sam Brown the leader, but out jumped there by two for gold. And again, back on the lash, not really very convincing. He's dropped in behind, certainly red. And he's switched to the outside now. Sean Bowen keen to get him jumping more accurately as they come towards the fourth. And back on the lash was better there. Risk and roll, up with the pace as well, a close fifth. Larry's just in behind them with Mac Totti and also Diego de Chamil to the rear end of the field. So the eight runners make their way around the bottom turn and head back up to the next line of four fences and Sam Brown taking the field along. Sam Brown from two for gold. Right up the inside is Risk and Roll, reading out slightly wider to certainly red and widest of all now, back on the lash. Larry and McTotty and Diego de Chamil are all in behind those leaders as well. Safe and sound over that one. The eight runners make their progress now down towards fence number six. Sam Brown been up there throughout, but last year's winner, two for gold, into a really nice rhythm as well and probably touched down just in front there. Two for gold and Sam Brown then. The two leaders at the next, in the air together, back on the lash again. Quite awkward on the wide outside. Third place for certainly red and fourth position for risk and roll. With back on the lash is Larry. Larry with McTotty and Diego de Chamil. So two groups of four as they turn back into the home straight for the first time. The leading group of four are two for gold, Sam Brown, certainly red, and risk and roll. Then there's a gap to the other four. Larry, McTotty, Diego de Chamil, and now back on the lash. Remember, he was right up there early. He's dropped back to last of all as they now come in towards fences nine and ten. Two for gold, over safely, just in front from Sam Brown, certainly red, and risk and roll. Three length gap then to Larry ahead of McTotty, Diego de Chamil, back on the lash this will be the last next time around two for gold lovely jump from last year's winner to land just in front here two for gold sam brown sam brown's been in good form running again this year in good races including at kempton last time out involved in a very warm race there he's followed then by certainly red and with certainly red is risk and roll no movement forward yet from larry racing away from us mac totty McTotty followed then by Diego de Chamil and back on the lash is still last. Through their departure point now and downhill again they head to the next line of four fences. Two for gold and Sam Brown in the air together again there from certainly red and risk and roll. Larry's a bit closer now with McTotty and Diego de Chamil and then a bit detached is back on the lash as two for gold continues to trade blows with Sam Brown. Certainly red was a little bit awkward at that fence. Downhill to the ditch next. Risk and roll still there to the inside. Larry and Diego de Chamil out wider with McTotty still in touch. And back on the lash, our back marker. Over the next one then. And now just one to jump before the turn through Swinley Bottom. Away from the ditch, another plain fence ahead of them now. Sam Brown on the inside with two for gold in the air together, these two. They've been fantastic to watch. They've got into their rhythm from a very early stage and they've been jumping fabulously. From certainly red in behind them, together with risk and roll. Larry is next with McTotty and Diego de Chamil and at the previous fence, back on the lash, was again quite chancy. So they now turn round through Swindley Bottom and uphill towards the Final six fences in the race. Four up the side and two back in the home straight. Sam Brown and two for gold. Again, both terrific to watch in the air there. 
certainly red on the outside. Risk and Roll has never been far away, still stalking the leaders in fourth place as they take the next fence from Larry McTotty, Diego de Chamil, and back on the lash. Be fascinating to see if any of those ridden at the back of the group can make any imprint on the leaders. Well, two for gold and Sam Brown really serving up a treat here. They've been absolutely together, like old friends, enjoying themselves in the sunshine today. Sam Brown and two for gold. Again, fantastic jump from the pair. Followed by risk and roll, certainly red. Larry's closer now. You could argue that going best of all is Diego de Charmille on his first run for ages. He's up on the outside and moving very smoothly under Harry Cobden. McTotty is next. He's driven along and back on the lash is now tailed off. Racing for home then. Two fences left to take in the veterans handicap chase. Two for gold, the leader. Two for gold from Sam Brown. Followed then by risk and roll. Larry trying to get there. Certainly red and Diego de Charmille's effort was soon petering out. Two for gold and Sam Brown. They both deserve a medal here. They've come down towards the last and they are still together. What a finish. In third place is Certainly Red. Sam Brown far side, two for gold from Certainly Red. Sam Brown and two for gold. Terrific finish. Sam Brown just getting the better of the argument. Sam Brown wins it from two for gold. Certainly Red and then a gap to risk and roll and Larry. And they're off and racing. Today's finale is the Colts and Phillies handicap hurdle. And a long run round Swidley Bottom before they get to the first of their hurdles. The first one to show is the four sixes who's out in front with Josh the boss right in behind. Supreme Gift is on the outside of Arcoob and it's so fury. And get a tonic widest of all a close six. Hurricane Harvey and Espoida Rome are the early back markers as they make their way around in this beautiful late afternoon sunshine and now approach flight of hurdles number one. So the first of 10 to jump here, the four sixes out slightly wider of Josh the Boss, the two leaders, It's So Fury and Arkub not far away as they take that first flight of hurdles. Supreme Gift landed in fifth place over that. Hurricane Harvey, Get a Tonic and Espoir de Rome taking the next flight of hurdles. And just nudged along away from that was Hurricane Harvey. It's also squeezed along Espoir de Rome. But the clear leader now is the four sixes. Sean Bowen striding on. Josh the boss and It's So Fury move second and third. Followed then by Supreme Gift alongside Arcoob. And then Espoir de Rome get a tonic. Back marker being Hurricane Harvey as they swing round in towards the home straight for the first time. The four sixes leads the field. The four sixes comes down towards flight number three with a two length lead over Josh the Boss in second place. It's So Fury is with Supreme Gift and then Arcoob with Espoir de Rome, Get a Tonic and Hurricane Harvey still last as they come to the fourth and over that one safely our leader. The four sixes will come by the enclosures with a three length lead with a circuit to go. So the four sixes Followed then by Josh the Boss in second place. It's So Fury and Supreme Gift, a three and four. Followed then by Arcoob. Arcoob racing alongside Espoir de Rome and Get a Tonic. And at the back end of the field is Hurricane Harvey. So the runners turn right-handed. And they'll spend the next half a mile or so in, in the shade. And the leader continues to be the four sixes. Turning now to face the first of their flights of hurdles down the back. The four sixes, the other seven runners tightly grouped up in behind. The four sixes produced a lovely jump. Not such a good jump from Supreme Gift in about fourth place at the time. Down the hill they come. In second is Josh the Boss, It's So Fury, Supreme Gift alongside Espoir Rome, Arcoob, patiently ridden is the mayor, Get a Tonic, and last of all still is Hurricane Harvey. So now they head down towards the next flight of hurdles, the last on this section of the track, and the four sixes. Oh, dive there and it's gone. The four sixes has gone. When holding the lead, the four sixes out of the race. Most of the others did very well to avoid being impeded with Josh the boss, It's So Fury, Supreme Gift, now the leaders, followed then by Espoir de Rome. Get the tonics going well in behind those and the back two 
Arkoub in company with Hurricane Harvey. So now through Swindley Bottom for a final time this afternoon and on they go with four flights of hurdles left to take. It's so Fury traveling comfortably, but so too Josh the Boss, these two disputing the lead. Supreme Gift, Sam Tristan Davis starting to work away in behind on him in third position as they come towards the next flight of hurdles. Espoir de Rome next and Get a Tonic moves with some menace on the outside of the field. Hurricane Harvey still in behind them with Espoir de Rome as they take that next flight of hurdles. Up front, Josh the boss leads here. It's so Fury now coming under a bit of pressure. Supreme Gift also ridden in third place now. In fourth is Getatonic. She's been catching the eye for some time now in third place. Arkub next. Hurricane Harvey's not given up on the game. Neither has Espoir de Rome. Looks like another Ascot exciting finish here turning for home. Two to jump. Josh the boss. It's so Fury and Supreme Gift on the outside. Arkub now fighting for every inch of room in behind them. Trying to come again, Arkub, with Bryony Frost as well. Taking the second last there. And it was just Supreme Gift who led from Josh the Boss. Arkub needs to go again and they're clear of Itso Fury and Hurricane Harvey. Down they come towards the final flight of hurdles. Supreme Gift, the leader at the last, was untidy. Hands another half chance to Arkub. Bryony Frost chasing the prize all the way home. These two are clear now. Supreme Gift and Sam Tristan Davis from Arkub in second place. Hurricane Harvey staying on in third. It's Supreme Gift who's out in front. Supreme Gift goes on to win the last by four or five five lengths from Arkub in second, Hurricane Harvey was third and Josh the boss was fourth home.